Hey guys, my name is Gloria and welcome back to my channel. There's still time to enter my latest international book giveaway where you can win some fantastic bookish things, bookmarks, pins, stickers and of course some brand new beautiful books. I will leave the video linked up above so you can check that out. It does end in a few days so be quick if you haven't entered by now. But today I want to recommend some short books for you. It is coming into the summer and on warm sunny days which aren't too prevalent in Ireland but it is quite nice and sunny outside today. You don't always want to be lugging about Stephen King's It with you or Lord of the Rings for example but you may want to find some short books to read. So today I have some novellas and some short story collections they're all in the horror dark fiction genre that I think are fantastic and that I've read in one day they're all 200 pages or less and I think they would be fantastic for a short read. So the first one I want to talk about is a quite a gruesome book it is called Siphon by A.A. A. Medina. It's about a doctor who is a head hematopathologist. He works with blood in a hospital and he has a lot of stuff going on in his head. He's starting to crack. He has a lot of pressure from his work, from his colleagues, from his grandfather as well and he has some repressed memories that are starting to break through and he also has an unhealthy obsession and infatuation with a female worker who he works with and there's a lot going on in his head and unfortunately an accident in the hospital leads to him developing a thirst, shall we say, that he ends up giving into and things spiral from there. This is really well written, short obviously, there's there's blood, there's gore, there's some harrowing scenes in it and it is told from the perspective of quite an unhinged and uh, bizarre person so if you're into that kind of thing you should definitely pick up Siphon by A.A. A. Medina. This one comes in at just 111 pages so you can definitely get this one done in one day. The next book I have is the Ethereal Transit Society. This one is involving a cult but it's a little bit different. It doesn't start with the beginning of the cult or anything. It's actually after the messiah of this cult has died and there are a couple of cult members who have been tasked with going and retrieving his body so that they can deal with it the way that the cult would uh, but they're retrieving it from his hometown and things don't go as planned even even as they thought it would go so it's it's a little bit sci-fi it's a little bit cosmic horror and there's some really odd things done with glowing goo and corpses in this uh, a little bit a little bit gross a little bit grimy but really well written and very enjoyable and this one comes in at 131 pages so we're really staying under the 200 mark for these. The next up is one of my favourite uh, contemporary writers Hayley Piper The Worm and His Kings. This is a another cosmic horror of someone who has to go down into the underground sewers of a city to try and find the person that they love and again it does involve a weird cult and uh, the title alone is so intriguing to me I don't want to give away too much about it but the worm and his kings like what what the hell is that about but this is really interesting uh, obviously coming from a queer writer it's got some queer themes going on and it's obviously coming from Hayley Piper herself uh, has some fantastic writing as well and this one is just 114 pages but I guarantee you it is packed full, very well paced, nothing overdone but it is packed full of interesting things and action and just a great story that I think a lot of people should 
read. The next one I have for you is I read in ebook form, so I don't have the physical copy, but it is called Song for the End by Kit Power. It's got a very cool punk cover to it. And this one is based in England, based around music and a band. It's about a song that a band create and as they're recording it, they can feel that there's something different about it. But they they put it up online and don't really think about it until it starts to gain a lot of traction, a lot of views, and these views turn into some very bloody and gory scenes. The song seems to have a really violent impact on people, uh, much more of an impact than they were hoping to have with their music, but it is a quick fast-paced, action-based story about this guy trying to figure out why his music is doing this to people. And it's a fantastic punk music related horror story that was very fun to read. I would definitely recommend. The page count on that one is just 125 pages, so it's a short, sharp read that you should definitely give a go. The next one is called Parting Shot by Daniel L. Nadin. And this one is a short little zombie story, uh, but it's it's really well paced as well. It's told from the, the perspective of the end of the story, but it goes back in the protagonist's mind to how he got to where he was uh, in this zombie apocalypse and standard sort of zombies but uh the the characters really make it interesting the characters that he meets the the need to sort of be by yourself and protect yourself but also the the very human need to be in a group and to feel like you have other people to protect you and to be protected by and the impossibility of staying in a group like that for very long in such a an apocalyptic situation. The characters are great, the action is great and it all culminates in this end parting the shot and I think it was just a, a great little zombie story particularly for someone who isn't really into zombie stories. There's definitely plenty of good zombie in this but it's also got plenty of good character and story and everything else to it as well. The page count on that one is just 106 pages so it is quick but it is rich as well. And just as one more bonus novel, I was going to do five novels and five short story collections, but as a bonus novel novella I also want to recommend Dial M for Mutants by Matt Thorne. Look at the cover on that, it is absolutely gorgeous. This one has is set in the 90s and it has a real nostalgic uh, theme to it. It's got a couple of cool old style vintage ads in the back. It is about a reporter who works in on a supernatural magazine where they, sort of like a tabloid, where they throw out fantastical stories about ghost sightings and aliens and Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster and everything and this guy is sort of at the end of his career he doesn't give a crap anymore until he is asked to go and investigate this one last story and he brings with him a new recruit for the paper who's a brand new young woman who wants to make her name as a photographer and they go there expecting to find some raving mad woman who doesn't know what she's talking about but actually do find real blood, real violence, real gore and a real monster that is now has them in its crosshairs and they have to figure out what it is and what it is doing and as you can see from the cover it is to do with mutants and this has great story, great writing, great characters and some really creepy and visceral visuals I think would be great as a as a horror movie as like a monster movie um, and I really find it very entertaining very fun to read it does uh, cross the 200 mark but it is only 230 pages so if you're a quick reader if you're just looking for 
a little bit more bite to your novella, you should definitely pick up Dilem for Mutants by Matt Thorne. But if you're not into novellas and you want some variety in what you're reading, you might want to try some short story collections and these are the ones that I would like to recommend to you. The first one I have really matches my colouring today. It is Dead Leaves by Keelan Patrick Burke. Beautiful cover as always. I think he designs them all himself. Nine Tales from the Witching Season. I really enjoy his writing. Uh, I've spoken about his novel novella which you can also read. Uh, Sour Candy before, real creepy, visceral, really hooked on to a fear of mine. But these stories are all have a perfect autumn, Halloween-y kind of vibe to them. They're great to read around Halloween or maybe halfway through the year when you're kind of missing Halloween or you want to get into the Halloween vibe. Wouldn't know who that would be for. But these are great and there's a lot of variety and a lot of fantastic stories in here so you should definitely check this out. That one comes in at just 103 pages. The next one I have is one that I just read last week and it is called Diaries of the Down by Ivan Radev. This is a collection of 11 tales that all have the two running themes, uh, one being that they're all either diary entries or online blogs or transcripts from an interview and they also all have a, a core fear in each story that the protagonist is trying to fight through or trying to get away from or possibly even causing themselves and these can range from the fear of loss to the fear of death itself or to the fear of being alone and his writing is fantastic. There is such a great variety in these stories. There's a great one that is very Lovecraftian cosmic horror. There's another that is quite comic horror. It's very funny to read and all of them have a really relatable character at the centre that you can really grasp onto in the narrative and I thoroughly enjoyed this and would thoroughly recommend it to you as well. The next one I have is called Supermarket of Death by Jim Harbison. This one has a fantastic name first of all, it really hooked me in on it and again this has some great comedy horror in it, it's got uh, a lot of stories, I think there's at least 20 stories in it and some of them are really gruesome, some of them deal with really sort of taboo subjects even in horror but in such a way that it's it's entertaining and enjoyable to read and even, even sometimes turns it into a sort of comedic, uh, comedic, comedic story and it's a fantastic collection and I really enjoyed it when I read it. It's short, you'll get through it and you'll love each and every one of them. Next up we have Unsafe Words by Lauren Rhodes. Lauren is a queer woman herself and this collection is a dark fiction collection that does deal with a lot of queer themes, queer characters in there. It ranges from sci-fi to sort of historical to real sort of classic horror monster to ghosts. There's just so much in this and the writing is so well handled and so well crafted and it's got some really great queer representation in it as well that I really enjoyed. So I was very happy to read this and very happy to report that it is good. So you should definitely read that this summer. And the last collection that I have for you is Corpsing by Kaylee Edwards. This one I really enjoyed. I particularly enjoyed uh, one story that I still remember even though I, I read this over a year ago of a young girl. It's a coming of age story and it's about physically and metaphorically shedding your skin and changing from outside forces, from inside forces, hormones, chemicals and terrible boy. But I really enjoyed it. There's some really cracking stories in that. I don't think there was a miss in the entire collection. I really enjoyed it and I think more people should definitely read it. So those are my 
10 plus one bonus short reads that you can read in 2022 and I really hope that there's one in there that you haven't heard before, there's one in there that really interests you and that you can pick up. Don't forget to join in on the giveaway if you so choose, there's still some time to do that. If you're looking for more short reads, I have another video that I filmed a while ago that you may want to check out. I will leave that down below and at the end of the video. If you like what I'm doing here, you can like and subscribe down below and I shall see you in the next video.